from where one came is often where one will return. For the mech in this video, it is a bizarre homecoming. A product of the Dark Age, the war machine documented here was born of a military necessity, and one which involved embracing an ancient, tried and tested design. Another entry in the incredibly long-serving lineup of mechs related to the Stinger. In this video, we are going to do an overview of the Cosby Battlemech and Myoma Research Firm's Phoenix Hawk L. Not to be confused with its older and heavier ancestor, the Phoenix Hawk L is a late model developed and deployed by the Draconis Combine, and it made its debut in 3116 during the Dark Age of Battletech. In this early portion of the Dark Age, the Draconis Combine and its mustard soldiery were in, to say the least, poor conditions. The Combine had been savaged by the Blakist era decades before, but also had fought two costly wars against the Ghost Bears, who were now known as the Rosselhaig Dominion. While they would taste victory against the word of Blake, their encounters with their clan neighbors had been less than successful to say the least, losing key planets each time as well as bleeding soldiers and equipment. These brutal battles also displayed to House Karita's leadership that it needed to begin to take steps forwards in terms of its military procurement, and it would need to update its military doctrines as well in order to compete with the ever-changing battlefield conditions of the new age of warfare. There was something in the military that had started to become somewhat of a liability. Despite multiple upgrades and despite its legendary performance over the Succession Wars, the Panther was doing more now than just beginning to show its age. After the Second Combine Dominion War, a decision was made to finally begin the process of looking for a replacement and an adequate one at that. This time, it would not be done as a refit package, but with a brand new design, a new chassis, and one meant to overmatch the original in many respects. Unwilling to replace the Panther with a more expensive medium mech too, meant that the new mech being put into production had to not only satisfy new goals, but had to make sacrifices where necessary. It had to be faster and more agile, be just as armored, and possess comparable amounts of firepower or utility. This is a lot easier said than done, as you might imagine. While there was a competition, the design team at Cosby MBRF would submit the winning proposal, which was arguably the most fascinating on hand too. Notably, the company would take the tried and tested Phoenix Hawk and downsize it to a 35 ton light mech. Before being too critical of Cosby for wanting to do this, it is very important to note that the original Phoenix Hawk, in fact, was built off of the Stinger, meaning its origins lay in simply being a 20-ton scout mech, before being upgraded to a powerful skirmisher and recon asset in the form of the 45-ton Phoenix Hawk. This process would simply be a halfway point of returning the Phoenix Hawk series to its original weight while trying to retain its most powerful features in order to compete with the Panther Battle Mech. To do this too, the Combine Battle Mech manufacturer would also need to leverage now commonplace technologies in the Inner Sphere, using almost every advantage possible. Endo Steel and Star League Aero Extra Light technologies were a must for the mech, just for instance. Production began in 3116, which was during a time of relative peace. It is noteworthy that during this less politically violent time, the Combine, much like the Capellan Confederation, had been quietly rebuilding its forces beyond agreed upon levels in the post Devlin Stone world. The Phoenix Hawk L and a multitude of other mechs would be a part of this quiet and concealed strengthening of the dragon. The reception of this new battle mech, dubbed the Fenikusu Taka, by the Draconis Combine Mustard Soldiery itself and many purists within the state, was a more than welcoming one. It had far greater mobility than the older Panther series of mechs, and in addition, had a much greater capability of handling infantry and lighter assets. 
while still being dangerous towards other light mechs and mediums as well. Being popular with its pilots and the forces they supported was a definite boon for the machine during this time. It also appears most often in recon forces, inside of Combine regular formations. When war returned in a wild way to the Inner Sphere, with the collapse of the HPG network, and with the ignition of conflict across all of human space as a result, this mech would see major actions against every single traditional enemy the Combine had. They would face down the Republic of the Sphere in the Combine's efforts to regain what they had lost to Stone's ambitions. They would be in skirmishes against the Rosselhaig Dominion, and would help scourge the traitorous Clan Novacat. But most importantly, they had been on the front line, and performing with devastating levels of efficiency against the Federated Suns in the Fed Sun Combine War that raged in the later portions of the Dark Age through to the beginning of the Ill Clan era. The most noteworthy deployment of the Phoenix Ock L, in fact, where it performed most exceptionally, was in the battle that cemented the fate of First Prince Caleb Davian. That, of course, being the Battle of Palmyra, where they would help in the wholesale destruction of the largest force House Davian had ever assembled for a single assault after the first two succession wars. They would be present as well in the fall of New Avalon, and just as likely were on the defending side against the liberation of the world by the new First Prince, Julian Davian, some years later. Now, this relatively quick brawler and scout is once more on the front lines, having just come away from the collapse of the Dragon's Tongue, and has been deployed against oncoming incursions, invasions even, on the other side of the Dragon's border. This new test is the ultimate one for the Combine's replacement for the Panther. Will it, and its pilots, be able to stand against the onslaughts that now are placed against the Dragon? Time, metal, and blood will tell. A light mech weighing in at 35 tons, the Phoenix Hawk L is a powerful asset on the battlefield. Originally meant to be a relatively inexpensive and simplified light mech, this would not quite be the end result, but nonetheless it is still a powerful and worthy machine. The first iteration of this new form would be the Phoenix Hawk 11K, or the PXH-11K. During the Dark Age, certain components that were traditionally quite expensive would become less meaningfully so. The L makes sense as a battle mech in almost every respect, especially if you view it as a merger between a Phoenix Hawk, a Panther, and a Recon concept. In going over this DCMS design, let's first delve into its core system features. First, regarding its internal structure, it installs Inner Sphere Endo Steel in order to save 1.5 tons of weight. At this size, every ton counts. Beyond this, the PXH-11K has an XL Gyro in order to save yet more weight, though at an increased level of vulnerability for the mech. This means it is more likely to be disabled through a gyro hit, which can create a great vulnerability for the battle mech should it suffer a through armor critical or a critical hit to the center torso. If a hit goes through, something disastrous will happen. To move on from this, the mech also has a standard cockpit, though this is a part of a full head ejection system. The full head ejection system the mech possesses makes it more likely that the pilot will survive a battle, should the mech be disabled or destroyed. This adds a level of pilot safety which is a wide departure from how the Combine treated its soldiers over a century earlier, and displays a keen evolution in its military's dedication to maintaining experienced soldiers for longer periods of time. Ironically, save the meat, rust the metal. As a quick note on the structure of the mech, the L deviates from the original Phoenix Hawk significantly in one more respect other than its weight. Just due to the extreme volumes of critical space taken up internally, the mech's left arm actually removes its hand and lower arm actuators. In regards to cooling, because of its limited weight and because of its limited tonnage for weaponry, the 11K just has its base 10 double heatsinks, 
letting it cool 20 per turn. This is absolutely adequate given its loadout. When it comes to its onboard electronic systems, the 11K is served reasonably well by its Cypher Comcon SCU4 communications package, as well as a Matabashi Sentinel insulated targeting and tracking system. One of these is related to a reasonably useful targeting quirk, which is its accurate weapon TSEMP benefit, making its potentially battle ending weapon all the more dangerous. Beyond this, the Phoenix Hawk L is burdened with the poor ceiling quirk. Both of these traits are only used when playing with the advanced rules. One of the biggest contributors behind the replacement of the Panther was to have a platform that as a whole consistently was able to deliver on mobility, and the Phoenix Hawk L does in fact do just that. While there are faster and more agile light mechs out there, it is a huge step up for this combat line light mech to be able to fight on the move in the ways that the L does. Fitted with a 4.5 ton GM 210 XL fusion engine, the Taka can reach a maximum speed of 97 kilometers per hour, or nine movement points in the tabletop game. It also has the benefit of being able to leap up to 180 meters, or six movement points in game. This mirrors the original Phoenix Hawk perfectly, which is more than ideal for this lightweight skirmisher, as its predecessor is renowned for its brawling and skirmishing abilities. In other words, it can traverse mountains, hills, cities, and forests with little problem due to its jump jets and it can generate impressive defensive bonuses with them. To add to this grandeur, the L can keep up with most forces it would be deployed with on the ground as well. Overall, it has a solid rating in this department, given the mixed light mech role it was designed to embody. It is impossible to overstate how important protection is to the Finukusi Taka, and for a series of very important reasons. First, it has a high quantity of very delicate materials on board in order to save on weight. For instance, its side torsos are filled with engine slots, and its gyro fills out its open slots in the center torso. This is to say nothing of the more reactive materials on board, such as the 11K also having an abundance of ammunition, specifically found in its left torso, and its ignition would be the destruction of the mech most assuredly. Another devastating item to see critically damaged is its TSEMP system, which can explode much like a Gauss rifle. A case is installed to mitigate this somewhat, at least in the torso. However, this is done for the sake of saving the pilot, not to save the machine itself, which will be disabled or destroyed by the blast. So, how does the L attempt to save itself from this? Well, it has an impressive 6.5 tons of standard plating, granting it 104 points of armor. It is still a light mech, of course, meaning taking direct hits is something to be avoided, but this volume of plating is at least respectable, despite the increased lethality of the later eras of Battletech. The next most important feature it has, frankly, is its mobility, which it must pair with its armored protection in order to survive. All the same, should the PXH-11K become trapped on a round of combat without significant movement bonuses, or finds itself facing a highly skilled gunner with heavy weaponry, its time on the battlefield will be limited, especially if its left torso is the principal recipient of powerful attacks. Never stop moving in this thing, in other words. This combine derivative of the Phoenix Hawk has a fascinating array of weapons in its base form, where it can be used for managing forces of multiple types, but also for disabling, in theory, just about anything in-game, using a weapon which first emerged during the Dark Age. Despite doing no damage, its main armament, which it even has an advanced quirk enhancing, is a terrifying specter for any battle mech to face down. So, let's start with the main weapon system, which is the TSEMP cannon, or the Tight Stream Electromagnetic Pulse. The weapon itself has the range of approximately that of a standard large laser, or a plasma rifle, but does no damage. Instead, it has an effect applied against any vehicle. Just as a quick note, some vehicles will gain bonuses against the attack if their power plants are some form of combustion engine. 
all the same, when the beam hits, there are three outcomes. One, nothing happens, which is statistically the most likely single outcome, even if only by a little. The second outcome is called interference, which against most mechs is on a 7 or 8. Interference badly hinders the enemy's ability to function, but it still at least gives them a chance to operate. The most devastating result is on a 9+, plus, because on that result, the mech will simply shut down. Yes, shutdown sequence has been initiated. This can hit any mech under 100 tons, and have this effect with some reliability. The TSEMP cannon alone makes the 11K extremely dangerous to any target it faces on the battlefield. Even the mightiest of mechs may be felled or disrupted by this new age device. But this isn't the only component in its dangerous arsenal. Mounted in its left arm, it has an MML-3 with one ton of ammunition per type. Letting it switch between SRMs and LRMs is needed. Then, in its right arm, Accompanying its TSEMP, it possesses an inner sphere ER medium laser for punching holes as needed. Finally, the last piece of its arsenal is three heavy machine guns, split between the two arms, along with 50 rounds of ammunition for them. These weapons will chew through infantry, or even rip into mechs at close range. All in all, the 11K is very well gunned for its weight, but the fact that it can be a true threat to any other mech under 100 tons just by landing a single hit, makes it a uniquely dangerous battle mech, especially when factoring in its speed and maneuverability as well. The PXH-11K is the right mech for the right time in the Draconis Combine. While facing serious threats from almost every front of its borders, it can call upon this mech. The 11K is a relatively quick battle mech with a tough outer shell for its size. It can make decisive differences in any engagement it finds itself in against mechanized or infantry forces with its offensive systems. Or if trapped, it may even be able to disable a target in order to make an escape. While yes, its internal systems are very much vulnerable should its carapace be cracked, and can lead to a catastrophic failure of the battle mech, it doesn't disqualify that the PXH-11K is a smartly built unit designed to fit into a skirmishing or recon role and it will enhance any force it is deployed with as a result. While it may not one for one replace the Panther in every respect, it adds new capabilities to its arsenal to such a point that it truly is a unique and impressive battle mech on the field. But it is a light mech, and that means while it has a fantastic list of options for play, it cannot be allowed to be caught in the open, or in a moment of weakness, as that will be its doom. But there is another PXH-11, which does fill the niche of the more traditional Panther in many respects, and it is an equally terrifying presence on the battlefield. The PXH-11K is a machine with a very elegant approach to its objective. The PXH-11K-2, produced at nearly the same time, is a battle mech which attempts to emulate the original Panther's battlefield capabilities much more closely, but in this devastating and quick form. To start with, its heat sinks, armor, and mobility are identical to its sibling model, but its purpose is more closely linked to direct hostilities. Two key internal systems do change outside of its weaponry. One of those is in the realm of cooling, in that it installs a coolant pod on board in order to help assist it with managing its much more potentially spicy heat load. The other change seems to be geared more towards battlefield longevity, namely because it has a case 2 in the left torso, increasing its survivability remarkably. As if its explosive materials are hit, the mech may be saved from the catastrophic explosion that follows and may limp back to base, or continue a desperate engagement. The real difference comes in the form of its firepower, however, which is much more built to directly confront and destroy the enemy, rather than to harass, interdict, and disable them. Barring its MML-3 launcher, almost every system is changed. There are twin ER medium lasers in the right arm instead of one. Its machine guns are entirely removed, 
However, in its place, the 11K2 installs a brutal snub nose PPC with capacitor. The weapon is absolutely devastating. It has a reasonable range and hits for decent damage at close and medium distances. Its short range bracket is also ironically quite long, going out to nine hexes. When this cannon hits its target, it will, even without the capacitor, do significant damage. When combined with its capacitor, this strikes at close range with the force of a clan ER PPC, potentially ripping huge holes into targets or ending a fight in a single headshot. Its MML launcher also works superbly in tandem with this weapon, crit fishing after holes are blown open in the target. Its ER medium lasers are there just as backup weapons, more or less. This mech is a fantastic evolution of what the Panther was. While there are other refits for the Panther that are quite impressive, or at the very least are more simply built, there can be no doubt that the PXH-11K2 is a Panther killer in terms of its ability to replace it. Leveraging the Phoenix Hawk design, the Panther's weight, and advanced technologies to create a devastating light war machine for the DCMS. Interestingly, the 11K2 works exceptionally well when paired with a normal 11K. This is something which should not be forgotten by any means. This deadly duo, these double dragons, are a sight no rational enemy commander would want to see, because they understand the frustration and danger of sending their forces against it will lead to. The Phoenix Hawk is a battle mech which has been linked to a multitude of designs across almost every weight bracket. It proved itself to be one of the most valuable medium mechs ever constructed. The Draconis Combine, upon receiving Cosby BMRF's proposal, saw the wisdom in adjusting the Phoenix Hawk to this new purpose for a new era of warfare, and it has proven to be an excellent design overall. As far as its performance is concerned, while it does have vulnerabilities, overall, the PXH-11K and PXH-11K2 are a pair of truly devastating battle mechs. Whether it be the forces of the Republic of the Sphere, the Rosselhaig Dominion, or their long-standing enemy, the Federated Sons, this new Phoenix Hawk series has been up to the tasks asked of it by the DCMS, replacing or enhancing the most frequent variants of the Panther in most respects. The Combine's light mech forces have always been well served by powerful, unexpected light war machines, and this tradition has yet to change it would seem. Whether it be on the battlefields of the 31st or 32nd centuries, House Karita's light mech arm remains one of the best in the setting. And in the Dark Age and Ill Clan eras, part of that legacy is held up by this descendant of the incredible Phoenix Hawk. That legacy being held, of course, by the Finukusu Taka. Thank you all for joining me here today. I really enjoyed putting this one together. It is the first mech of the new Dark Age mechs that were voted on by channel members a couple of months ago. It took a bit of a road to get here, but yes, they are finally getting covered. I'm excited for the remaining mechs after this as well, as we'll be seeing the Davian Scarecrow next, before we head back to the Combine for the Shiro, and then we're going to see the Republic's Malice get its due as well. After the member-voted mechs, we're going to be hitting the Free Worlds League's Giuliano. And then either I'll be completing the channel's Halloween special, or we'll be heading straight over to a video covering the channel's new mascot, which you've seen at the end of some of my videos. This one itself even, which is a massive assault mech called the Rock. No, it is not the proto-mech. So, if you've enjoyed this content and want to see more of it, don't forget to like, and if you're new here, subscribe. 
It really does help the channel out, I promise. I'm going to leave a link in the top pinned comment to Technical Readout Dark Age for anyone interested in reading up on this 35 ton monster. And I'll be leaving a link to the record sheets for it as well, if you want to take this thing out for a spin on the tabletop. Both are a part of CGL's catalog, so you'll see links to their website from there. I used both of these products in order to make this video. Finally, as per usual, I want to give a huge shout out to the channel's members. This content, as you know, would not be possible without viewers like you. And in this instance, this content was literally selected by viewers like you. I hope you all enjoyed it. With that being said, I look forward to reading all of your comments. What did you think of the Phoenix Hawk L? Are you as big on it as I am? Let me know, because I will catch all of you in the comments section below.